$150 million. That was the Division 1 jackpot on the Powerball three days ago. Three days ago. There's a guy who uh, he bought, I think he bought two tickets actually. He bought two tickets just on his way through filling up at the servo. And he, he checked the numbers on the first one. As usual, nothing. Checking the numbers on the second one. And I think he almost fell out of his chair. Maybe he just actually did because this is how much he won. Crazy, right? Um, and apparently he turned up for work today anyway. Now, $150 million, as you can imagine, that's a historic amount of money. What do you reckon are the chances that someone, anyone, this person, actually wins? I'll give you a start. Come in, take a seat quickly, please. There's a one out of. How big do you think that number is down the bottom? Five million? Five million's not a bad guess because it's, we know it's a lottery. It's astronomically small, right? Then again, though, five million. I mean, there's 25 million people in Australia, so it's not that bad in the scheme of how big the population is. Anyone want to advance on five million? This is about the chance of winning the Powerball. There's a one, and then there's a three, and then there's a four, and then there's six zeros after that. One in 134 million. You can be buying tickets for a really long time and never get to that, right? Now, I want to think about this for a minute. Like, there's a reason why I'm starting with this example. We would call this, what would we call this? This is the probability of winning. winning. That'll do. Okay. The probability of winning. Now, I'm going to pose a question to you that really requires you to think. It's not a complicated question, but I really actually want you to ponder it for a minute based on what we thought about this morning. I want you to tell me, I need a different color for this one. I want you to tell me if this is what we know, because we can just calculate it, right? This is the probability of winning. I promise this is not a quick trick question, but it's a real question that will help us think about what we're going to learn in this period. If we know that the probability of winning is 1 in 134 million, what do you think the probability of winning is if we know, if there's the condition that, as it was this morning, the weather is sunny? Now, like I said, this is not a complicated question. And it's not a trick question either. It has a real answer. You can all work it out, given the information and what you know about a lottery. Anyone want to take a stab at it? Yeah? It's the same. It's the same as whether it was not sunny, right? Now, we have language for this, yeah? In probability, we can talk about two different events that really have no impact on one another. What do we call these? Starts with an I. You can all say it together, can't you? It's independent, right? These are independent events. Now, this is really important. Uh, I'm writing this down because you should too. Even though this is a really simple idea, you're like, is there a trick to this question? There is not, okay? But if we know that the probability of an event is unchanged by this other thing, you know more information, you're like, does this help me work out the probability? Answer, no, it doesn't change anything at all, okay? Now, just as we did before, like you, you, I knew I could ask you what this word was because you met it, you, you met it years ago. The first time you learned about multi-stage events, you're like, this thing, rolling this die, does not affect the flipping of this coin. They are independent, okay? But now, let's drill down a little deeper as we did in period zero. What I want to do, oh, this thing, these wheels get me every time. What I want to do is to try and lay down some language and notation around this, which is going to get really abstract really fast, and that's why it was important to clothe this in a, um, an actual situation, okay? So, let's think about some notation here for independent events. What does this mean? How would we notate this? Well, I've already given you the first example about winning and the weather, right? But let's do this in general terms. We would usually just call some event that we're interested in A, and some condition that we know about B. So if I said the probability of A if you know that, given that, when 
B is also known, if A and B are independent and that's equal to P of the event that you're interested in, right? So, this tells us that A and B are independent. When you read this, right, you're like, okay, A is not related to whether B happens or not. Knowing that information doesn't affect anything, okay? But that means we can sort of draw a further conclusion from that, right? By the way, even though this arrow is kind of like, it's an arrow, it actually does have a technical meaning in mathematics. You usually only really encounter it in extension two, but I'm gonna teach it to you now, cause it's not that crazy. If you know this first thing, it implies there's a logical connection to, I can deduce that, well, if A is independent of B, stands to reason that B is independent of A. Make sense? Uh, just like knowing that it's sunny doesn't affect your chances of winning, uh, knowing that you are the person who won, right? You are that person, that doesn't affect the chance of the weather, right? So it goes in the opposite direction. Not everything does this, but this flows in both directions. So how would I write that? I would say the probability of B given A is the same as the probability of B, it remains unchanged. So far so good? Okay, now, this doesn't sound like rocket science, but when you go to use it, it's not as easy as it sounds once I find where my mouse is gone. Okay, so I brought my cable this time, so you can uh, actually see the question now, that's helpful, isn't it? Have a look at 48 there. I'm just gonna move this over just a little bit. Now, I'll give you a moment to take it in because we've waded deep into what on earth does all this notation mean territory, okay? A and B are events from a sample space such that the probability of A, <laughs> just to make things super helpful and confusing, right? Capital P for probability as we always say it. This lowercase p, what is that? Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a number. It's just some number, right? As opposed to this capital B being like it's a bit like f of x, right? That thing is a, is a function, right? Probability of a thing, but now I'm talking about it's a number, it's positive, that's good, like probability should be. Okay, then they roll out this. Now take a moment to read these carefully. I'm not gonna explain them. I want you to see if you can take your thinking and your knowledge of notation from previous weeks. And then have a think about options A, B, C, and D. Given that, it tells you events A and B are independent, like we've been talking about just now, okay? Let me give you one to two minutes to have a think. Once you've got an answer, turn to your neighbor or person behind, behind in front of you and have a discussion about which one you think it is. I'll give you some time to think. So, you can see how you're like, it seems so simple, why are we drawing this all out? It's like, oh, a real question makes my brain hurt, <laughs> okay? So, let's try and unpack this together. Part of this question, part of what makes this a good question, is that there are bits in this question that are not relevant to the question, but you don't know which parts those are, and that's part of the question, okay? So, let's have a look at writing down this first. They've got a, some event A, and its probability is some number, I don't know what it is, but it's lowercase p. So I'm just gonna put that down. I always begin, whenever I tackle a question, particularly those kinds of questions where I think, I don't know which bits are relevant, I just write down all the things I think could be relevant, and then I try and like strike it out from there or highlight the bits that matter. Then, I mean, I'm gonna ignore the fact that P is greater than zero because probability, right? So it's, it's fine. But then we get to this stuff here. This is the conditional stuff, right? So what I know is the probability of B given A is some number, and then the probability of B given, now we had this discussion over here, but just to make sure we're all included, right? What does it mean when there's a dash on something, on an event? It's the complement. So we could have also written that as an A with a bar over the top, say, uh, different notation, same meaning, okay? This is equal to N. Yep, okay. And then the question is, A and B are independent events. A and B don't affect each other when what? And then you have all these different options. Okay. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it helps to think about all of these things. Like when something's super abstract, you just think of it in some concrete terms, right? So, I mean, there's no reason why I can't use the example we all started with, which seems so intuitive and obvious to all of us. Let's just use it, right? So let's call this winning the lottery. Let's call this sunny. Is that okay? I mean, B and A can be anything, right? And we actually already know what the value of M is. It's this 
ridiculously tiny number, okay? So the probability of winning the lottery when it's sunny is this. How would you read this if, if that's how I have described this line? This is the probability of winning the lottery if it's not sunny. Now, if A and B are independent events like winning the lottery and weather truly are, then is it gonna, what difference is it going to make to my probability if it's not sunny? Answer, no difference. That's what independent means. It doesn't care about whether A is happening or A is not happening. These two things here, M and N, just like you told me before, should be the same. Does this make sense? M equals N. That's it. Okay?